Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread and Scripture Song broadcast for this 10th day of May, Friday, and we're going into another weekend, and today's topic is titled, O oh, Precious Lord, and this is a short little topic today with this poem, and then we have a little thing here about Mrs. Mary Brown, the pastor's wife here, and uh, preacher's wife, and we'll go into um, her a little bit at the bottom of the um, page here after we get done with the poem, but uh, before we get started on that, uh, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and he too can be your Lord and Savior today if he's not already, and hope you trust him as your Savior, and he'll wash away all your sin and give you eternal life, and then the Holy Spirit will come and dwell inside of you and, and uh, teach you and guide you and direct you on the truth as you desire to live for him. And don't quench the Spirit or agree with the Spirit, but allow Him to rule and reign in your heart and get rooted deep into God's Word and get grounded so you can stand fast in the faith and not waver and all that. So that happens after you get saved and then get into a good Bible-believing church and around believers in Christ and around good preaching from God's Word. So, amen. All right, so uh, we have here for the Scripture Song today, Jeremiah 29 verses 12 through 13, and so we'll go ahead here and look at Jeremiah chapter 29 in its entirety here and get some context for these verses here, and so let's see here we will go, I won't read the whole chapter here because there's 32 verses, but we'll go through the first uh, 14 verses here and then read those and you can read the rest of the chapter on your own time, so let's get here in the Chapter 29, verse 1, and it says, Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah, the prophet, sent for, from Jerusalem unto the residue of the elders, which were carried away captive, or captives, and to the priests, and to the prophets, and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. After that, Jeconiah, the king, and the queen, and the eunuchs, the uh, princes of Judah and Jerusalem, and the carpenters, and the smiths were departed from Jerusalem by the hand of Elisa, the son of Shaphan, and Gemariah, the uh, son of Hilkiah, uh, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent unto Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon, build ye houses, and dwell in them, and plant gardens, and eat the fruit of them, take ye wives, and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there, and not diminished, and seek the peace of the city whither I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it, for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. And verse 8, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which ye cause uh, to be dreamed, for they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord, that after seventy years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Verse 12, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord, and I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. And then continuing on down there through the chapter there, and you can 
can read that in your own time, so that gives you an idea of who God's speaking to there, and how we can apply it to our lives in spiritual and practical ways, and understand that it's speaking to the nation of Israel there, and not uh, to other church, and everything is written for us, but not everything is written to us, so you got to understand all that, and that you don't get tripped up and get false doctrine by misunderstanding these things. So now that you understand that, let's go ahead and sing Jeremiah 29, verses 12 through 13 from the Scripture Song CD with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. So here we go. <clears throat> Jeremiah 29, 12 and 13. Then shall, shall ye call, call upon, upon me, and ye shall go, go and pray unto, unto me, and I will hearken, hearken unto you, and ye, and ye shall seek me, and find me. When ye shall search for me with all your heart. That's right. Then shall ye call upon me. And ye shall go and pray unto me. And I will hearken unto you. I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek for me. With all your heart shall seek me and find me and shall search for me with all your heart you shall seek me and find me and you shall search for me with all your heart Search for me with all your heart. And that's the Lord speaking there. So, and we should uh, seek Him with all our heart. That goes for believers also. But of course, we know the context there. But uh, so, that's that. And we'll put that aside there and do that again towards the end of the broadcast along with yesterday's. Topic and now let's go ahead and get into the Baptist bread for today, for Friday, May tenth, twenty twenty four, titled "O oh, Precious Lord," and we have here Psalm one sixteen fifteen says, "Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints." Psalm one sixteen fifteen. So let's look at this um, here, uh, Psalm one sixteen, and get uh, the psalmist here. See if there's any psalmist for this one. So 116. All right, so let's see here. Okay, so this is 116. No psalmist here for this one, but this is a good um, uh, psalm here. So we'll read it in its entirety and then get into the um, topic here, the poem. So Psalm 116, verse 1 says, I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death compass me, and the pains of hell get hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. Praise the Lord. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe, therefore, have I spoken. I was greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, All men are liars. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thy handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now, in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, 
in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. So that's the entirety of Psalm 116. So now let's go ahead and read this poem here. Again, this is titled, O Precious Lord, for this 10th day of May, Friday. And again, Psalm 116, verse 15 says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And this is uh, Mrs. Mary Brown here. And uh, let's see, Mary Brown, pastor's wife, deceased from Morgantown, Indiana. So let me read this poem here that she wrote. It says, O precious Lord, help me to be a faithful servant always for thee. Help me to show my love for you. Help me to always be strong for you. Help me also to be willing to give my life, my love, as long as I live. Help me each day to do my best till you come, excuse me, till you call me home to find my, uh, to my final rest. Okay, need to reread that again. Sorry, I butchered that. So, um, let's reread that again in its entirety. And again, here we go. Oh, precious Lord, help me to be a faithful servant always for thee. Help me to show my love for you. Help me to always be strong for you. Help me also to be willing to give my life, my love, as long as I live. Help me each day to do my best till you call me home to my final rest. And as I stand before you today, I pray I've pleased you somehow, in some way. Amen. So, apologize again for butchering that the first time around. So, all right. So, the bottom here, it says, Mrs. Mary Brown died November 17, 2023, Morgantown, Indiana. It says here, Mary Brown was a godly example of a preacher's wife to her children her friends and the church. Uh, her husband, James Brown, served for decades. So, praise the Lord there. And, uh, all right, so that is the poem there, and a little bit about her. And then her husband's name was James Brown, and he served uh, there for uh, decades in Morgantown, Indiana. So, praise the Lord. All right, so that's that uh, there. And now I'll put that aside. All right, and I've got the Daily Strength, the Volume 2 book, as we are going to be continuing on this topic here of fellowship. And today is Friday, Day 97, titled, No Fellowship with Darkness. And Ephesians 5.11 is the passage. It says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So that's Ephesians 5, 7, 11. And now let's go ahead and open up Ephesians chapter 5 and get some context here. Ephesians is a good book, good Bible book. Of course, all the Bible is good. So let's go here to Ephesians 5. And let's see here. So how many verses are there? So um, let's see, five eleven. see. Alright, so let's go back to verse 1 and read this here. In verse 1 of chapter 5 it says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. So speaking of born-again believers here, uh, believers in Christ the church, and verse 3 says, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this we know that no whoremonger nor unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not 
uh, be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes dark, yeah, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, for it is a shame even for, to speak of those things which are done of them in secret, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light, wherefore he saith, Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And that's up to verse 21 and then verse 22 all the way through the rest of the um, chapter talks about um, um, uh, wives submit to yourselves to your husbands and all that, and husbands uh, the head of the wife and love uh, the wife and all that, and uh, as the church is subject unto Christ. And so I encourage you to read the rest of that in your own time, but that's where we'll stop with that uh, there. So just to give you some context there, and now let's go ahead here and get into this topic here again, day 97, Friday. No fellowship with darkness, and we read Ephesians 5.11 and the uh, following verses before and after. So again, it says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And now introductory thoughts. It says, The importance of fellowship cannot be underestimated, but neither can the importance of refusing to fellowship. It is important to fellowship with the right people, but also equally important that we have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. The people of God have uh, no business yoking together with the world in any work of God, no matter how beneficial the help might seem, right? Fellowship suggests an agreement among the involved parties, yet Second Corinthians 6.14 drives home the point when it says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness, right? Um, when uh, we fellowship with uh, carnal believers or the unsaved, we accept their motives and objectives as our own. So let's be careful of that. And now for devotional thoughts for children, and of course we can apply this to adults also. It says, God wants us to choose good friends with whom to serve him. Psalm 119, verse 63. He knows we need their help. We have a part of us that loves to do wrong, and choosing the wrong friends will cause us to do the very things of which God disapproves. Proverbs 28, 7b. Remember Solomon's failings, 1 Kings 11, 4, and 9. So, all right, so take heed of that. And now for everyone, it says, What are some areas where fellowship with carnal believers or the unsaved could be harmful? Do you have fellowship with those people in these areas? What should you do? Hmm, yeah, uh, why is it important that we have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. What should we do to separate ourselves from ungodly works? So make sure you answer those correctly and ponder those uh, questions there. Now for prayer thoughts, it says, Ask the Lord to give you wisdom to, in fellowship and ask God to yoke 
you together with the right people. And then the hymn for today is titled Nothing Between. And we will go ahead and sing that, uh, these hymns now. So there we go. And put that aside there. And grab the um, thing here. All right, so let's see the first one here we'll do and try to do it a cappella first and then listen to Brother Alltop sing it and then we'll sing the second one after that. So this is the uh, first one is titled, I Gave My Life for Thee. Another one is the Submission of the Saint Hymns, a spiritual song written by Frances R. Havigal and she lived from 1836 to 1879. And then Philip P. Bliss, 1838 to 1876. So here we go. Trying to sing this here. And then listen to Brother Alltop's version. Because I like his version. So, you know, probably try to probably sing it the way he sings it. So here we go. <clears throat> I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed. That thou mightst ransom be and quicken from the dead. I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? I spent long years for thee in weariness and woe that an eternity of joy thou mightest know. I spent, I spent long years for thee as thou spent one for me. I spent, I spent long years for thee, hast thou spent one for me? My father's home of light, my rainbow circled throne, I left for earthly night, for wanderings sad and lone. I left, I left it all for thee, as thou left aught for me. I left, I left it all for thee, as thou left aught for me. I suffered much for thee, more than thy tongue may tell. Of bitterest agony to rescue thee from hell. I left, I born, I born it all. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, let me re sing that. I suffered much for thee, more than thy tongue may tell. Of bitterness, agony, to rescue thee from hell. I born, I born it all for thee. What canst thou bear for me? I born, I born it all for thee. What canst thou bear for me? And I have brought to thee down from my home above salvation full and free, my pardon and my love. Great gifts, great gifts I brought to thee. What hast thou brought to me? Great gifts, great gifts I brought to thee. What hast thou brought to me? O oh, let thy life be given, thy years for him be spent. 
world fetters all be riven and joy with suffering bent blend i gave i gave myself for thee give thou thyself for me i gave i gave myself for thee give thou thyself for me praise the lord sorry about messing up on that fourth stanza there i got uh, um where i was singing the wrong one i think for a minute there so all right so that's the hymn there and then i'll read you the story and give you the stanzas and then we'll hear brother all tops version there and so here we go it says here on the story Francis learned to read at age four and was a poet at age seven. She penned these lines for an inaugural hymn at age 21 while visiting friends in Dusseldorf, Germany, uh, viewing a portrayal of Christ on trial before Pilate. She reflected upon the artist's simple uh, inscription, this have I done for thee, what hast thou done for me? She scrolled the, these lines on a scrap piece of paper through uh, eyes blurred with tears. Upon returning home, she assessed the poetry as unworthy and cast it upon the hearth. Uh, failing to ignite, the crumpled paper fell out, singed but not consumed. Picking it up, the author returned it to her purse. Some days later, while visiting an elderly lady, Havergal thought it might provide some little encouragement. Reading the lines, it pleased the invalid so much, she begged a copy. Soon copies were made and sent in all directions. Hymnist William Havergal, uh, Francis' father, wrote a tune and published the father-daughter composition in a leaflet the following year. Hmm. Over a decade later, Bliss published the lines with an original tune. It is one of very few tunes uh, paired beside another lyricist's lines. Hmm. So, amen. All right, so that's the story there. And now the references. Here we go, stanza 1. It's First Peter one nineteen. Ephesians 2 1 and John 21 15. Stanza 2 is 1 Timothy 1 15, John 16 22, and 1 Peter 4 2. Stanza 3 is Revelation 4 3, Philippians 2 7, and 2 Corinthians 8 9. Stanza uh, 4 is Isaiah 53 5, and uh, Romans 5 9, Romans 8 17 to 18. And then stanza 5, we have John 4, 10 through 14, Revelation 21, 6, and Psalm 68, 18. And then stanza 6 is Romans 6, 18, Philippians 3, 8, and Proverbs 23, 26. So that is the end of the first hymn. And we're going to listen to Brother All Top's version here. So here we go. Let me turn this up here and let you listen to this. I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, that thou might ransom me, and quicken from the dead. I gave, I gave my life for thee, what hast thou given for me? I gave, I gave my life for thee. 
Hey, man. Amen. Hey, homeowner. Praise the Lord. All right, so that was his version of the hymn there. And so let me go here, and now let's do this other one here. Turn this down in case there's ads. So, all right, so, nope, okay. So I'll turn this back up. And this is titled Nothing Between. So now we'll do that one. There, nothing between, and this is hymn 746 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book, and this is one of these resolve of the Saint Hymns Spiritual Song, and so uh, this one was written by Charles A. Tindley, who lived from 1851 to 1933, and then um, again Charles A. Tindley, and then arranged by F. A. Clark, unknown. And there is a story for this one here, and we'll be singing this one here again uh, very soon, so about a week or so down the road, so um, you'll hear this twice um, here not too long from now. Um, so let's go ahead and sing this one here, and let me do that here, all right, so here we go. Nothing between my soul and the Savior, not of this world's elusive dream. I have renounced all sin for pleasure. Jesus is mine, let nothing between. Nothing between my soul and the Savior, so that his blessed face may be seen. Nothing preventing the least of his favor. Keep the way clear, let nothing between. Nothing between my worldly pleasure. Habits of life, though harmless they seem, must not my heart from him ever sever. He is my all, let nothing between. Nothing between my soul and the Savior, so that the blessed face may be seen. Nothing preventing the least of his favor. Keep the way clear, let nothing between. Nothing between my pride or station. Self or friend shall not intervene. Though it may cost me much tribulation, I am resolved, let nothing between. Nothing between the world and the 
our Savior, so that His blessed face may be seen. Nothing prevents Him least of His favor. Nothing, nothing between, nothing between and many hard trials. Though the whole world against me convene, watching with prayer and much self-denial, I'll triumph at last with nothing between, nothing between my soul and the Savior, so that His blessed face may be seen, nothing preventing least of His favor.